All right. So um, in this unit, we are working on ionic bonding and ionic naming. And yesterday was like part one of this lesson. And in part one of this lesson, we had the ionic compounds and the exceptions. And then we did this one and we did this one and we did this one and we didn't do this one. So we're going to talk about that today. So hopefully you've located the polyatomic ion section in your notes. Um, and if we were in face to face, I would have you get out your handy dandy periodic table. I would handy, have you flip over your handy dandy periodic table and I would have you write on the back of your periodic table all of the polyatomic ions like I did here. So I'm going to get write yourself a note here. Write the polyatomics. Write the polyatomic ions on the back of your periodic table. Okay. I ask you to do that not because I want you to write them down for the sake of writing them down, but I use it as a tool when I'm when I'm when I'm writing chemical formulas and chem and compound names. Okay, that's how I and I'm going to refer to it as front side, back side, and that's and so we'll kind of talk about that in a second. Um, the next thing I want to get at here is no, you do not have to memorize these on a test, on an assessment. Um, you will be given them or you will be uh, you will be able to use your periodic table. Okay, so that's why it's important that you can write that you should write them down. Now, I want to think about polyatomic ions for a second. When you hang out with your with your friends, right? Usually, the general mood of the group of people that you're hanging out is all the same. So, if you're doing something like super fun, like chemistry homework, you're all like, "Yeah!" And so, you're all super positive. And if you're hanging out with your friends and you're doing something like not so fun, like playing like playing video games, you're probably like, mm, right? So the entire group is either positive or negative usually, okay? Now, the reason why that's important is because the, the polyatomic ions are a group of nonmetals that are bonded together and, they, and when they're bonded together in a very specific matter, they have a charge. So, for example, ammonium, NH4+, plus, has a positive one charge when it's 1N and 4Hs all combined together. Cyanide, CN, minus 1, has a, that combination of car, carbon and nitrogen it, it has a minus 1 charge. Acetate, C2H3O2, minus 1, um, has... Uh, that combination of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is all one unit, and it has a minus one charge. Chlorate, ClO3 minus one. Nitrate, NO3 minus one. Carbonate, CO3 minus two. Sulfate, uh, SO4 minus two. Permanganate, MnO4 minus one. Phosphate, PO4 minus three. Hydroxide, OH minus one. Any questions about the names or anything about polyatomic ions. It's a unit of something. You just want us to write all of them on the back of our table? Yeah, um, and I would, I mean, you might want to do it like later or tomorrow or whatever. Just remind yourself to do it because you'll, like I'm going to show you why as I'm going through it, uh, but you don't have to memorize them. So, when we write the names of compounds that happen to have polyatomic ions, basically everything is the same. You figure out what the name of the polyatomic ion is, you write the name of the polyatomic ion as it is on the back of your periodic table, and uh, in the um, and then the anion or the, the other ion, you just write as is. So you grab it off the periodic table. So the naming part is actually pretty simple. So let's do a couple of examples and walk through it. ALPO4. All right, so in this example here, aluminum, Al, is a metal, and PO4, okay? Um, what I usually do is I start by looking at the back of my periodic table, and I locate PO4, which is this guy right here, and I see that it has a very special name that's phosphate. So I know that it's a polyatomic ion because it's on the back of my periodic table. So all I'm going to do is... Just because I think it's also important to think about, 
polyatomic ion PO4 has a minus three. Aluminum has a charge of plus three. Um, and now I'm just going to write the names. So what we did in the past was we located the name for the symbol AL, which was aluminum. And then we're now all we're going to do is we are going to copy whatever PO4 is, which happens to be phosphate. And that's it. Um, the most common mistake students make is they're like, uh, PO4 should be phosphorus oxide. And that's, oops. And that's just not what we do. We, call, we, don't, we don't write the names out individually. We just write what the new name is. So here I am. I'm looking at CaOH2, right? And I'm going to start by looking at the back of my periodic table, and I'm going to scan it. I'm going to scan it. I'm going to scan it, and I'm going to locate that hyd hydroxide, which is this one right here, okay? Mm, hydroxide, OH minus 1. OH, got it. Check. So that tells me that I have a polyatomic ion. Ooh, e. So this tells me I have a polyatomic ion with a charge of minus 1. CA is in the second column on the periodic table. It's, that makes it a metal, um, and it has a charge of plus 2. I go to the periodic table. I locate the symbol CA, and I find out that its name is calcium. Um, I refer to the back of my periodic table and locate hydro the OH and see that it's hydroxide. So I'm going to just simply write hydroxide. Simple as that. So the next thing I do is I see, I see. oh, somebody might be thinking, why is there a parenthesis there for one of them and not for the other ones? And the, we're going to get into that a little bit more in the next part of this lesson. But in reality, if we treat the polyatomic ions as a unit, right, that parenthesis with a 2 after it tells me I have two units of OH. If there's no parenthesis, that tells me I have one unit. So in the next case, NO3, there's no parentheses. I only have one unit of NO3, okay? But speaking of which, so I'm going to do just what I did. So I'm going to locate NO3 on my periodic table, which is this guy right here, and it happens to be nitrate, and it's got to be a minus one. Yes, Jocelyn? Um, when you put the M over the first section of whatever formula it is, what does that stand for? Metal. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So, yes, because yeah, because these are ionic compounds, so they have to have a metal and something else, non-metals usually. So, um, yeah, in this case here, yeah, you're right. That's a metal, and I'm just kind of reminding myself that, that that's how I remember that I'm dealing with an ionic compound. Speaking of which, if I locate Na on the periodic table, I find out it's in column one. When I locate it's in column one, I see that as a charge of plus one. I locate it in column one, and I see that Na's name is sodium. And then I locate on the back of my periodic table. Um, where is she now? Okay. Nitrate, NO3 minus one is nitrate. So I'm going to just simply write the name nitrate for NO3. Hopefully this doesn't feel too awful. Uh, next one, K2CO3. So I'm going to start by saying, is there a CO3 anywhere on the back of my periodic table? And I see, oh yeah, CO3 is a minus 2 and it has a very special name named carbonate. So that tells me that this is going to be a polyatomic ion and it's got a minus 2 charge. K is in the first column, which means it's a metal and it has plus 1 charge. Now when I go to write the name, I'm going to go ahead and identify... Um, that potass K uh, has a name of potassium. Um, I don't like the way that looks. It looks like a potassium. There we go. I guess that's better. And then CO3, because we just looked that up on the back of our periodic table, and we found out that it has CO3 uh, as a charge of minus 2, but it's carbonate. So I'm just going to simply copy that. Another hint, 
as to whether or not a compound has a polyatomic ion in it is the number of elements present. If there's only two elements present, then that means it doesn't have a polyatomic ion. But if there's two or more elements present, well, more than two, so like C, A, O, and H, that means that I've got three ion, elect, elements present. So that means it's probably a polyatomic ion. Okay. Any questions on this? Now we're going to go and do this the opposite way. Again, writing the formulas is exactly the same thing as we've done before. We identify what the polyatomic ion is. If it's present, we write it. We, then we write the cation next to the anion um, with our charges. We crisscross the charges down, and then we check our ratio, and then we simplify if we can, and then that's it. The only difference, the only difference is if sometimes we will use parentheses, like say a number app. That number tells us that we have two units of the polyatomic ion. Okay. That's all that that means. If there's a three back there, it means that we have three units of the polyatomic ion. Um, so that's, that's kind of important to, 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 I guess, keep track of there. So let's practice this because this is, this, is this is actually also pretty simple. So I at least, I hope you feel this way. So again, I'm going to use my periodic table, my handy dandy periodic table that we call Jethro, right? And I'm going to start by, by saying sodium hydroxide. Hmm, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to consult the backside of my periodic table. And I'm going to locate that hydroxide is on the back of my periodic table. And if it's on the back of my periodic table, that means that I have a polyatomic ion. And it has a charge of minus one. Sodium, when I go to find the word sodium on a periodic table, I find out that it's on the left side. It's a metal, um, and it's in column one, so it's got a charge of plus one. So just like we did yesterday, I'm going to take the um, metal, the cation, and write it first with its charge. And I'm going to write take my polyatomic ion, which is hydroxide, put it in parentheses, and put a minus one behind it. I like to put them in parentheses because I sometimes I feel like sometimes I feel like if you're negative, like you just need a hug to feel better. And until we figure out what's really going on, um, the I, I usually put the polyatomic ions in parentheses and figure out if I need it later. Yes, Abby. Um, I have a question. How do you know like what the charge is? Of which? Of like any. So the the polyatomic ions there in the table that was in the notes, it says it's it says it tells you them, right? Like what about like sodium? So on Tuesday when we were less, when we were le the lecture lesson was the top of the periodic table had a uh, the first column was a plus one, the second column was a my, was a plus two. We skipped all the transition metals and we went over to here which was a plus three. We skipped fourteen. This was a minus three. This was a minus two. This was a minus one. That was a zero. You vaguely remember that. You're welcome. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crisscross my charges down just like I've done in the past. And I'm going to write the result, which is Na1OH1. I'm going to check my ratio, which in this case is 1 to 1. Uh, I can't simplify it anymore, so I'm not going. But I, uh, so, but the other thing is, is I don't write ones. So I'm going to write Na OH, and because I don't have more than one unit of OH, I technically don't need the parentheses. So the answer here is going to really be Na OH. So hopefully it didn't seem too, too bad. So we'll probably, I guess, practice another one. Carbonate. I don't know. I always start on the back of my periodic table now because I've got new fun stuff back there. So I'm going to locate carbonate on the back of my periodic table, and I see that it's CO3 minus 2. So that means I have a polyatomic ion with a charge of minus 2. 
I'm going to locate potassium, which is on the front of my periodic table in that first column. So it's got a charge of plus one. It's a metal. It's got a charge of plus one. Potassium has a symbol of K. Carbonate. Oh, I don't like the way that looked. Carbonate is CO3 minus 2. I'm going to crisscross the charges down just like we've done in the past. And I'm going to rewrite. So I get K um, 2 CO3 1. And I'm going to check my ratio. In this instance, the ratio is 2 to 1. I cannot simplify that anymore, so I'm going to rewrite. So I'm going to take K. Um, 2 and then CO3. Okay. Now, I didn't write the 1 this time because we don't write 1s. And because there's no, because the subscript behind the CO3 is a 1, I don't need the parentheses. So I'm going to write K2CO3. Jocelyn? So when you transfer the number from the top to the bottom, does it become not negative anymore? Actually, technically speaking, they both lose their charge. So they're not positive or negative. They're just whole numbers. Okay. Good question. All right. Next one. Aluminum phosphate. Man, I really like working off the back of my periodic table. It makes my life easier. Phosphate. Hmm. Is it back there? Yep. It's this guy right here. It's phosphate. It's PO4 with a minus 3 charge. So I'm going to say that it's a polyatomic ion, and it's got a minus 3 charge. Aluminum, I know is a metal, and aluminum... is in this column right here, which means it's got a plus three charge. And if aluminum's got a plus three charge, I'm going to write the symbol, which is Al, with a plus three. I'm going to write the polyatomic ion phosphate, which is PO4, um, with a minus three. I'm going to crisscross my charges down, just like we did yesterday, and rewrite. So I get Al3, PO4, 3, um, and I'm going to check my ratio. So in this case, my ratio is 3 to 3, which we can reduce to 1 to 1. So technically speaking, we will write Al1, PO4, 1. But we don't write 1s, so it's just going to become AlPO4. And I don't need a parenthesis around the PO4. Now ammonium sulfate. All right, so here's the thing. I see ammonium and I see sulfate. So I've got a two polyatomic ion situation. So I've got a polyatomic ion here, which has got a charge of plus one, and a sulfate polyatomic ion, which has a charge of minus two. Now, the ammonium polyatomic ion is the only polyatomic ion that you're going to be responsible for working, for, working with that has a ch positive one charge. It's the only one with a cation. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't other positive ones. It's just the only one that you're going to deal with. So I'm going to write them next to each other as uh, ions. So NH4 plus 1, SO4 minus 2. Crisscross my charges down just like we did in the past and rewrite. NH4 2. SO4, 1. Check my ratio. 
the ratio is two to one. I can't simplify that ratio anymore. So I'm going to rewrite. This time, though, I have to keep the NH4 in parentheses, but I don't need parentheses around the SO4. Now, let me try to explain. The two outside of the parentheses for the NH4 tells me I have two units of NH4. The one outside the parentheses of the SO4 tells me I have one unit. So I don't need a parentheses around the SO4 because there's one unit of SO4, but I do need a parentheses around the NH4 because there's two units of that. Does that make any sense? Hopefully. Maybe. Okay. All right. So uh, that was part two of yesterday's lesson. We are going to roll on to part, well, we're going to roll on to today's lesson, which is... Uh, coming up next.